I spent two days testing this method to make sure it really works, and I was right. We can indeed build an automatic crop farm for growing acid at our bases, using only 22 watts of power, which is very little. But the main advantage of this method is that it works in any region of the map, not just in contaminated areas. So three new rare plants have been added to the game, contaminated wheat, contaminated berries, and contaminated aloe vera. Do not confuse these with deviated crops, as they are unique plants found only in contaminated areas, do not spoil over time, and can be processed into acid using brewing barrels. To produce one unit of acid this way, you need two units of contaminated aloe vera, three units of contaminated wheat, or three units of contaminated berries. The processing also requires one unit of pure water and takes 20 minutes of real time. The numbers may seem small, but don't rush to conclusions. By harvesting contaminated plants, you have a small chance of obtaining their seeds, so you can start growing them at your base. The growth cycle of each of the three contaminated crops is 12 hours of real time, which means you can harvest them twice a day. The most important feature of these plants is that they do not require lighting. And of course you can automate the process with Groshroom, which can plant seeds and harvest crops on its own. You can obtain this deviant by gathering mushrooms, and the best spot for this is the large cave near the Sunbury locations. The cave is very long and has a lot of mushrooms, so you shouldn't have any problems. In this example we will be growing 150 contaminated berries, and here comes an interesting question, how to gather a total of 150 units of seeds. In fact, we only need to collect two units and then multiply them using breeding boost fertilizer. Each time you use this fertilizer, you will get three units of seeds instead of one. This means that starting with two units of seeds and tripling them with each iteration, you will reach the required 150 units of seeds in four iterations, or just two days. After that, you can give the seeds to your grocery room, and from that point on, it will take care of planting the contaminated crops and harvesting them, without your direct involvement. Contaminated plants themselves grow only in contaminated areas, and there is a handy interactive map to find them. I'll leave a link to this map in the video description. In my experience the best spot is the contaminated zone on the riverbank north of Securement Silo Alpha. This zone is huge, and you will easily find a lot of contaminated plants. Based on calculations you will need 80 breeding boost fertilizers to multiply the seeds to 150 units, which requires a total of 400 units of Scarlet Calamus. Fortunately, it grows abundantly along the river near Myers Market. All you need to do is gather them, then return to the teleportation tower, switch the world, and continue gathering. You will need to make about 20 such runs, and this may take up to half an hour. But you can also find it on the riverbank in the contaminated zone I mentioned earlier. In this case you won't need to switch worlds because you can collect about 80 units of Scarlet Calamus in one run, which is just insane. For growing contaminated crops you can use a closed type farm, and I have already shown how to build it in a separate video from the tip above. With this build all the planter boxes will receive irrigation, but daylight will only affect the top layer, which can also be covered with ceilings. I retested this farm, and it is fully operational. As you can see, all layers including the lowest ones, receive irrigation. I give my groceries exactly 150 seeds, and they plant them without any problems, but the results that I got, were inconsistent. The thing is, when you grow contaminated berries without using fertilizer, you mostly get 3 units of fruit. However there is a small chance that you will get an increased yield, so when using a large number of planter boxes, your harvest will be on average 20% higher. Let's say you have built a realistic 150 planter boxes and are growing exclusively contaminated berries, harvesting twice a day and getting 3 units of fruit from each plant. This would mean a minimum of 900 units of contaminated berries per day, which can be processed into 300 units of acid. Each brewing barrel has 4 slots, so it can process a maximum of 36 units of contaminated berries per hour or 864 units per day. This means that to process 900 units, you will only need 2 brewing barrels. In this way, you can produce about 300 units of acid per day, using only 22 watts of power and 5 minutes of your time. In my practical test, the contaminated berries harvest was over 600 units, which means about 400 acid per day instead of the minimum 300, but in fact, this number is far from limits. If you have an acid factory, you can produce more than 2000 acid per day in total. A guide to building the upgraded modular acid factory that can be saved in a blueprint is coming soon, and you won't miss it if you subscribe to the channel. You can also increase the number of boxes up to 200 units, and start planting contaminated berries manually, using yield boost fertilizer. In this case the minimum yield will be 6 units of fruit per planter box, and the increased yield, will be 8 units. 
This means you can produce up to 1000 units of asset per day in any region, using only 42 watts of power. Whether such a farm is worth your effort, is up to you to decide, and since you already know where to gather mushrooms for crafting fertilizers, I only wish you luck. As always thank you for watching and, bye.